Hey everyone, Honeyk867 here with part 14 of Let's Play King Strike East Trench for all case worldwide. Last time, well, we started our trial and things. I have an idea about this, but I want to look over the evidence. The defendant brought the knife of the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. I'm just going to look over this stuff. Seems like the Nico Sam originally da Paramount. Wait, really? Wait, what? I thought that Oh. Oh, I guess the evidence was searched around a little. Um tell guide map. Tar case, empty there's some water. Okay. Benefit to the victim. Okay, let's see here. Yep. Suicide report. Attempted suicide. Cause strangled the scarf and then stabbed with a knife. Bears the victim's blood and in guards fingerprints. Ripped from his costume, is covered in cords of blood. Strangled the scarf and stabbed with a knife. So this says the defendant bought the knife for the crime. Wait, the defendant bought the knife? Wait a second. Oh, that's pretty obvious. I just missed the bot thing. I just I felt I thought it said the defendant brought the knife. But even that's still a little iffy. Um Yeah, wait a second. W what? So the basis of your argument that this was a permitted murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Duh. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh? It has a gate water seal set into the handle. Gate water? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the hotel, you dum dum. That's the name of the hotel, the Gatewater Hotel. Uh oh. The murder, the murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. God. Eh. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big. <laughs> Edgeworth. That's so much easier than running the long karma. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry. The defense is simply too careless. Enlighten me. What? You do your finger wag. See if I care. I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There is no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't. Oh. <laughs> the question is, whether did this? Where did this knife come from? Why is that obvious? Why that's obvious? It came from the victim, Mr. Corder's room. No. Came from one guard's room, actually. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate a last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There's a knife and a fork on that table! Yes, there is. 
Then, where in the world did this knife come from? On guards or tower room. Ugh, yawning. If it pleases the court, <laughs> that's judge. If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the, of the defendant, Mr. Matt on guard. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? Dun dun dun! We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints. While we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Ungard's knife was missing. Erk! Mr. Ungard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution has proven this was a premeditated murder. Ah! You good, Edgeworth. But I'll find a hole. Just give me another testimony. I'll find one. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. Seems like Edgeworth has this pl plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps. I just walked headlong into it. Edgeworth using Gumshoe to be an idiot. Darn you, Yerk. Uh. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. Oh, crap. There is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. You can safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Deliberation? Yeah. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense would present evidence not yet shown to the court. Oh. Not yet shown to the court? Like what? The wine glass? Suicide report? Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, no evidence. We have that? Well, it's not this. It's not this. It's not the nickel samurai. It's not that. It's not the killer's thing. It's not his camera. Maybe the magazine clipping. Not the hotel guide map. Uh, not that. Maybe the wine glass. Um, maybe the suicide reports? They don't think about. Maybe the wine glass. I don't know. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well, Phoenix. The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer this uh, with something wrong here, Gabble has a way of ringing up. Out to the sound of our defeat. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm thinking about this. No science been drank. I, hmm. I'm thinking wine glass. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to this court? Oh, I hate these questions! I hate them! I don't like them! I don't wanna! No, I hate you, game. Why are you doing this to me? I don't wanna save, but I want to save. <laughs> um, I don't know. I wanna try no first. Because the only thing I can think of is kind of flimsy. Actually, I'll try yes. And if they give me an option to back out afterwards, that probably means there's a there's um. If they give me an option to back out, that probably means that I'm supposed to back out. Because sometimes they just won't give me an option to back out. But um, we shall see. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Wine glass, I'm guessing. Since this court is yet to see, Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I'm giving you one chance, and only one. Oh, God, pooples. The judge is saying, right, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtain for all of us. Wait, instant game over already? Hi there, health bar! <laughs> uh, 
I don't think it's the suicide reports. It's it's gotta be the wine glass. Maybe. Oh shoot, I'm scared. It's not like there'd be an option to back out after I lose. Um, an article from the tabloid gossip line. Uh, doesn't help much. I'm gonna try the wine glass. This is a wine glass? Is it not? Oh, I think I'm right. Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken. His makeup is all over the floor. These were all things that were, at one point, sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm, well yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over with everything else is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well, what do you all have to say? Oh, uh, well, yes. It is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Sir Edgeworth? What is it, Jonah? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion? Because there's no special meaning to that glass. What? Let's hear it, Edgeworth. It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. By the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. Wait, so Adrian Andrews discovered the body? Did we know that before, or are we just learning this? I don't quite remember, but if, if she did, then that could definitely mean she screwed with the crime scene. Although, if she placed the wine glass there, why? And why didn't she pick it up later? I mean, I mean, thinking about that, it's just weird. Like, why would she, like, if she did that, then she definitely could have screwed with more of the crime scene if you think about it. Anyways. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? Let me look at the crime photo. Um. She would have to walk in the room to discover the body. She'd have. She'd be surprised if she set it down without thinking. Hmm, she'd have to walk all the way over there, and then set it down. I don't think so. Come on, I just really have set that glass down without thinking. There's no way. Oh god. I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. Uh... They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. Oh god, why? This case is really down to the wire already. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set that cup on the table. Hmm, turn the situation on its head yet again as usual. Mr. do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just... No, he's not. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything outside of the evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Do you think the wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course, it's been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints? There are only one set of fingerprints left in this wine glass. Only one? Well, who's were they? Obviously... Adrian Andrews. 
What? Well, something is getting updated. I assume that doesn't mean that means it doesn't. I don't. I assume that means I doesn't lose. Um, let me check it. I found next to the victim and still the communities buried in the newspapers. That is why I said the person who discovered the body had left it there. Interesting. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Grr! I can't believe I fell into another trap. This time we actually got evidence out of it. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corda. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. But wasn't the guitar right there? Guitar thing? Guitar case? Hmm. Well, you just makes a lot of sense. Tisk tisk tisk. Now do you see, Mr. Wright? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Grrr! I've thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. Show you the answer I have come to discover. Wait a second, Mr. Regworth! I think the prosecutor has provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Uh huh. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. Wait, what? Interesting. Enlighten me. The prosecution has yet another witness we would like to, the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. Okay. What in the world is Mr. Edger thinking? He wants the truth. He doesn't want to end it just because he can. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Does he even know who's under there? Does he even know who's under there? Does he really? Does he really? Witness, your name and occupation. Raditas go. <laughs> uh. Gotcha! Grr. I wonder what happened to the calm composure he had earlier. It was all bagged away. Oh, Edgy Poo, it's been what, a year since we last met, hasn't it? You should you should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet It was the wicked witch of the witness stand <laughs> I love that name. I tell you, this time I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm gonna tell you anything and everything. That's what I'm worried about. Even things that don't have to do with the terrible crime. Just witness that terrible crime is all this court needs to know. Ratatize, I tell you. Shush! I'm talking to my dear Edgy Wedgie right now. Oh god. Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Uh, yes, madam. No, 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 please. By all means, interrupt her, please. <laughs> Um, anyway, witness, your testimony, please. It's true that they say that youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I'm not at all edgy. <laughs> now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. <laughs> yes, go on. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear, dearie Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. It should have been too much. Then we would have had a different victim on our hands, or we would have too. You were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone's crazy over that on guard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. Refreshing like a spring breeze. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man. Juwan covered up. A real dead man. Um, but those two were the same age. Anyway, as I was saying, I was pacing in front of, you don't have to go that slow, in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed the night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Oh, God. Why? Why does she exist? Uh...
What you witnessed? Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. Oh, pacing around. That sounds like fun. Not that I do that. Never! Okay. There was something I, I was interested in finding out, you know? No, I don't. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye the whole time. When someone showed up, a man coming out of Fort Juan's room. It was on guard. Not on guard. He was trying to sneak his way out of Juan's room. Really? Was it Matt or was it the Nickel Samurai? Because that makes a difference. See? It had to be him. He's the murderer. I see. And I know what I'm doing with this one. Press the windbag until she squeals. Ugh. Anyway, after the ceremony, I went to pace around the hallway. Yeah, pretty much just press everything here. It's all bag. What was your post on that night? Lobby. Supposed to help set up the stage for that trifling show. But I refused to help, I'll have you know. It was for that lead headed samurai show. I even took out a few of the nails. Oh, good to know you're so supportive of the cause. Besides, that manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. But didn't she say she didn't know much about it? I, I think. I think she said that. Maybe I'm dumb. So, I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? Oh yeah, spread your wings a little. More like goof off. Something I was interested in finding out, you know. I don't want to know. <laughs> don't make me press this woman. Something you were interested in? Just what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know. Uh, tell me anyways, even though I don't want to know. <laughs> Why? It's a contradiction. Okay. It's top secret between me and Juwan. Juwan's dead. Ah, and Edgy, of course. Oh, great. Well, could Mr. Edgeworth fill this in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? If this has, has something to do with the case, then you can append it to your testimony. Looks like we shouldn't force it right now. Hmm. And, and did the witness stay in the vic the vicinity of the victim's door door the entire time? <laughs> More like, were you stalking him? <laughs> okay. Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye the whole time. Yeah, I'm sure you have great eyesight. Oh, then wouldn't you tell us the number of people who went in and out of Mr. Ford's room? I have no idea! I thought you were a good security guard! Clearly I was wrong. I wasn't born so I, I wasn't born so I could count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned twenty, I kept I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Um Hate to check this for you, but Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, no one really knows. Yes, well, that would explain why your age was not recorded in the report. <laughs> Judge, you are one to talk. Because you're not even in the report. But, um, you're one to talk. Seriously, isn't the judge supposed to show up? I guess not. Oh, the characters were reorganized. We got Maya, Pearl, Gumshoe, Francisca. In order to report to something, Edgeworth will. Okay. The witness then saw someone, correct? That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. Details, details. I need the details. Who in the world was it? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses. Sorry, Sonny. Uh... The man that came out of Juwan's room. It was. He was. Oh, God. Yes, he was. 
Oh, I'm too scared. I can't say his name out loud. Ugh. What I wouldn't give to have Franziska's whip right now. Oh, yes. Franziska would be so useful against against old Dag. She would make her just confess everything. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyway. Oh, God. And God, man, and God, he was trying to sneak his way out of Joanne's room. Was it really him, or was it the Nickel Samurai? You saw my client? Are you sure about that? Yes, he. Really? I know I'm rat. When I say I saw someone, I saw that person. I get a sense of deja vu. Maybe to avoid a mess like last year, I should delve into this a bit further. Person's face, what the person was carrying, the person's clothes. Um. Hmm. Please tell the court of the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are. Really, as if something like that matters. But it does. Um, now that, now what was it? Oh yes, it was that thing. What thing? That gaudy thing he's always wearing. That racing jacket. Ah, he was wearing that at the detention center too. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pen pantaloons. <laughs> Men. Well, sorta. So, Mr. Wright. Was this testimony just now important or relevant in any way? Hmm. Um. Kind. Well. I want to say it wasn't that important. But. I'm trying to think. Wait, well, actually, sorry, I'm at this one. Ripped from his costume, covered in cordless blood, found on guards of the comma. Before I make the choice, I'm going to save the part. I can do that, right? Yes, I can. So until next time, still an outro phrase. And this is Ready 67 with part 14 of the Slave Kings Experience for all cases for blind. Next time, I already said my stuff. Bye! But yeah, this case, ooh, I'm liking it. Liking this trial.